difference, you can see here that we offer seven different colors of plastics for the bike. We have red, blue, and green, and those come on the three RTR bikes, the Losi FXR, the Club MX FXR, and the Pro Circuit. Uh, we also have white, black, orange, and yellow, so you can pick whatever color fits your style and go ahead and decorate your bike up. When you buy any of the seven colors, you do get this generic wrap kit. It's basically black, gray, and white. It'll match any of the colors and look great. The number plates have no numbers on them, and you get this black sheet so that you can add whatever number that you want. If you have a personal number, you can add that. If you have a favorite rider, you can put that on too. Also, when you get the plastics for the red, blue, or green bike, they will also come with the wraps that are included on the RTR versions. So you'll be able to, to rewrap and make fresh your pro circuit bike if that's the one that you have, or if you're switching over to that one because uh, it's your favorite style now, you can do that too. Um, with those wrap kits, you also get some unique number plates um, that match the scheme but don't have numbers on them and numbers to be able to put your number on those as well. So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna take uh, this yellow set of plastics, we're gonna wrap them up, uh, we're gonna use this generic uh, graphic kit and we're gonna select some numbers on there. Um, one other thing I'll mention is that we do have the dial lines for this wrap kit uh, up on the LOSI website. Link is in the description below and you'll be able to go ahead and grab those dial lines and if you're uh, good on the computer and good with graphics, you can make your bike look like whatever you want it to. Before we get started with the actual uh, sticker kit and applying that, first we need to clean the plastics. Just make sure there's no oil, grease, mold release or anything on them. I'm gonna use a glass cleaner and a clean microfiber towel here. Just kind of spray it on there and then just wipe down the sticker surfaces of these uh, plastics just to make sure there's no dust, lint, grease, oil or anything that would keep the stickers from sticking well. And just kind of work through that. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a hobby knife and I'm just gonna trim off a little bit of excess plastic uh, from the mold gates on here as needed. So now we have our plastics, no mold gate, nice and clean. We're gonna go ahead and wrap up. I'm gonna start with this left front uh, side panel here. I'm gonna start with this one because it's the most complicated one to wrap. I'm gonna kind of show you how I do it um, and just be patient with it. Take your time and everything will end up pretty good. Um, I always grab a hobby knife here and I just kind of peel up the corner of the graphic so that I'm not kind of clawing at it. And once I get just the corner up, I will grab it with my finger. It's definitely good to make sure that your hands are pretty clean before you start this process so you don't have too much oil getting transferred on. And I'm gonna grab the sticker here that's in the middle. Uh, it is the biggest sticker on the bike. Uh, so it's kind of the hardest one to apply and it's hard to see, but you kind of contour around this wrap a bit. Now what I do is I take this front corner and I locate that one first and I make sure that this bottom is nice and level and I'll kind of follow that around. When you're applying stickers, you kind of want to hold them up and go a little bit at a time, push it down as it goes so that you can try and avoid getting air bubbles as much as possible. And there we got lined up pretty good. So now I'm pretty much only pushed down along the bottom and then I'm gonna push up towards the top. There's a kind of a shape change here and you're gonna to wanna to stretch the vinyl across that uh, to try and keep from getting any air bubbles or any separation. So I'm just kind of working my thumb up, making sure it's pushed down nice and good. Kind of work here towards, this is the, the kind of the tight spot here, right? So we're kind of stretching the vinyl up there making sure that we get a nice, good application and seal. So that one actually worked out very well. It's on there. All right, we'll go ahead and grab the other parts of this guy. So same thing, I'll just grab the knife and just kind of bring the front corner up so that I can get it with my finger. And the same thing here, I'm gonna start from the front edge. This one's on the top a little bit. So we'll go ahead and get it kind of lined up here to start. And then we'll kind of follow the line around and kind of bring this tail down to kind of match the angle. It's gonna be a little bit of a gap in the middle. Uh, there's just kind of no way around that with this complicated shape. And you see the sticker lines up pretty good here. Same thing, we're kind of pressed along the bottom and then we're gonna kind of push the decal up from the middle out, try and get it down without any air bubbles. 
push it down in this surface here, and then up towards the top. And again, this is vinyl and it'll stretch pretty good to fit the shape of the plastic. Now, I did get a little bit of an air bubble in here. So if you get an air bubble, one tip that I have is you can always take your hobby knife here and just basically poke just a little tiny hole in that air bubble and then kind of press the air towards that hole. And the hole is pretty much, you can't see it and you get almost all of the air out. And so we got that. Now I'll grab this bottom piece, which this one's not too hard. This one I also start in this front top corner here. Just make sure we're going level here with the top of this guy. And everything is gonna line up pretty well here. And then grab this bottom corner here. place that guy right there. So all right, this is your left front panel. The one thing that we have is there's two holes for mounting the, the mounting screws to hold the panel onto the bike. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna cut those now. We're gonna use this hobby knife. And what I do is I basically push down on the hole and the vinyl will kind of stretch into it a little bit. So it makes it a lot easier to see. And then I'll basically cut kind of towards the middle of it and then work towards the outside and then just circle around the hole and you get a nice clean cut and you get your sticker out there and you have your nice clean hole. So you got another one right here. So same thing, I just kind of push down on it so I can see my hole, cut in the middle, get to the outside and then just circle around it and boom, done. All right, so we have all of the panels wrapped up now that are actually gonna be installed on the bike here in a couple minutes. But as you can see, we still have some stickers left on the sheet. These KYBs are for the fork. Uh, this pad right here is actually the handlebar uh, pad. Uh, and then these three actually go on the starting stand and the bike stand, and then these are for the rear swing arm. But let's go ahead and install the stand decals real quick. So we have our bike stand here. Uh, so it's got a pro circuit sticker here on each side. We're gonna go ahead and pull those off. And then also on the starting stand, there's a number plate here on the top. So we'll actually replace this one first. Uh, I'm just going ahead and use my fingernail and peel this guy off, hopefully in one piece. It's very sticky, but we got it. All right, set that off to the side. And then that's this guy right here. And so we'll go ahead and take our hobby knife again and get that peeled up and then get it located here on the back of the stand. And go ahead and get that situated. So there's our starting stand. And then we'll grab our bike stand here so we have our pro circuit stickers on both sides. We'll go ahead and peel those off.
good news is these surfaces are already nice and clean, so there's not a good reason to need to re-clean them. But you can if you feel like it. And then we got our Losi Promoto MX sticker here. So I usually just uh, align here the bottom corner and then make sure basically that I'm level across the bottom and go ahead and press and apply from the middle out. So you can see we got that one there. All right, so there's our stand stickers, pretty straightforward. Uh, now, one thing we got to do is we got to put some numbers on these number plates. And we're going to take our black sheet here and apply those. And I think I'm going to go for the number 623 uh, for June of 2023 uh, when the bike first initially ships. So let me get my six here. Punch the center out there. Where'd it go? There it is. So we'll go 623. And if anybody's wondering why we have the 23 on the uh, Losi FXR bike, that's exactly why, because the bike is shipping in 2023. And it's a big uh, project for us, so it felt like an important date. So there we go, six and two, and we'll get the three on here. Yeah, so now we have our 623, and we'll go ahead and do the other two panels here, and then we'll start installing these on the bike. All right, so we got our panels wrapped, we got our numbers on, we also have our stands wrapped. Let's go ahead and grab the stand and we'll grab the ProMoto MX. You can see here we're starting with the Pro Circuit livery. We're gonna go ahead and start basically pulling these panels off and decorate with these yellow panels here. So I'm gonna start by taking the rider off so that we have access to all of the side panels. So you pull the clip out, pull the pin out the back, and then you kind of rotate them up. You have this little mount here on top, quarter turn or eighth turn counterclockwise pulls up and then I'll put my thumb underneath the heel and kind of just push up the rider doll there and we'll move him off to the side and then I'm just going to start pulling these panels off so I'll pull off this left rear panel here two screws and we'll grab the matching panel in yellow All right, so we got these side panels and the rear fender on. Let's go ahead and move to the front. Obviously the number plate we'll do first. This one's gonna be pretty straightforward. It does have this hook that kind of goes around the, the brake cable, but it just kind of snaps out. It's a pretty loose fit. So just snap the new one on and line it up. Then we can run the screws in. All right, now to put the front fender on, we actually need to take the fork forks out to get access to that, makes it a lot easier. So to do that, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this brake cable out. So we're gonna pull the housing up here. So push the brake up, pull the housing out, get it to where the cable can kind of come out the side. And then we're gonna get the brake cable kind of out the bottom here. And then we'll pull the housing up till the cable can come out the side of that fork guard. And then we'll actually snap this guy back out and just kind of put him over the shoulder here. And we'll take our 2.5 driver and we'll loosen the triple clamps on both sides. And 
and we'll just pull them out the bottom. And then we'll take our 2.5 driver here and we'll get these two screws out of the bottom of the front fender. And pull this one off and we'll put the new one on. And we'll just run those screws back in there. All right, so we'll put that back on the stand. And then real quick, while we have this brake cable off, we have this sticker here on the handlebar pad. So I'll go ahead and lift up the bottom corner here of the old one. Gotta get it started here. Obviously it'll be a little easier if you wanna peel the rider off. Let's see here. Maybe I can get it from the back a little. Yeah, we'll get it from the back a little bit easier. So you can see we'll kind of peel it from the back here and get it up and there we go. Peel it off. So there's our sticker coming off and we'll go over here to the, the decal sheet. You can see here on the sheet, there's a, a front and then a fold line and the front obviously goes on the front part of the bar pad. I do think that it's going to be easier to install from the front. So let me get it off the sheet here. And I'll actually move the rider back and get this bottom lined up. And then same thing, kind of push it down and then roll it over the top, pushing it down little by little, and then make sure to roll it along the back and push that down nice and good too. So now we have our uh, low C bar pad there. Okay, now we'll, we'll work on this fork assembly and the uh, front fork guards and we'll change those out before we reinstall it on the bike. So I use our M2 driver here and take the screw out here and just slide this guy off and then grab the new one. And there's like a, uh, like a channel shape here that fits in the fork guard. So just kind of line those up and press them over and then we'll run the screw in. And just kind of run it in there. Doesn't need to be super tight. Then we'll go to the other side We'll remove the same M3 screw with our two millimeter driver and remove that and put the new one on and the same kind of shape feature is on there. So we'll go ahead and install that. All right, now we're gonna put the fork stickers on. I'm gonna take these off, but I think it's actually easier to apply them once everything is on the bike. So let's peel these, peel those pro stickers off both sides. All right, and then we'll put the forks back in the lower triple clamp, up through to the upper triple clamp, get everything aligned. And when you push them in, you wanna make sure there's a little lip here on the bottom. You wanna make sure that lip goes all the way until it keys in. And then we can take our 2.5 driver and tighten this down. And we want these screws to be snug, but not crazy tight, um, not loose. So we want them to not move freely, the fork tubes that is, but if they do move in a, a big hit or something, we do want them to be able to uh, basically hit themselves back straight in the next hit. So, all right. I'm gonna leave the brake cable off for now because it's gonna be easier to apply those stickers with the brake cable out of the way. Now I am gonna take a clean rag here and I'm definitely gonna clean the forks. Forks are, uh, they have grease and oil in them. So even though they should be pretty clean, I'm just gonna clean them off here. And we're gonna apply the KYB sticker here uh, along the fork and we want it to read down, uh, same as the Dunlop here, so that it matches. All right, and then the key for me with this one is because of the way that it's cut, we wanna try and make sure that we take our time and that we center it between here and this bottom lip 
We want to have it square to the outside and then we want to make sure that the decal doesn't bend as you kind of squeeze it up. So with this one, I actually get it lined up and I actually try to kind of push across the middle of all of the three to basically make sure that they're straight. And then I'll kind of push around both sides. So straight on the side, centered between here and here, and then push it around and try and get it as straight as possible. And again, centered between here and here, straight along the side of the bike. If you get a little off this way or this way, you can just loosen the screws and twist the fork tooth and get it aligned. No big deal there. And then the last stickers that we have on the sticker sheet here are our rear swing arm stickers. You can see those. So we'll just go ahead and take this one off the bike here. And these ones do have a little bit of a shape. You can see it's thicker in this part of the swing arm than here. So we want to start with the, th the thicker part and move thinner. Uh, so you can kind of see you want the riding the right way. So this is going to be the one for the right side. And the way that I do these is I always start at the back end. I want just a little bit of gap here. And then I make sure I get in the middle of the flat part of the outside of the swing arm. And then just kind of pull it around. Make sure that it kind of stays in the middle of the swing arm there. And then just kind of push it in. And then let's do the sticker sheets clean, nothing left on that. So let's just put this brake line back in, put the rider legs back on, and we'll be all set to go. So again, here we have our brake line. We're going to pull it over the handlebars. It's going to snap through here, click through the back hoop of the front number plate right there. And then we'll bring it down here to the fork guard. We'll run the cable through the slot, and then we'll push the housing through there, guide it through. And then we'll run the ferrule here down around the horn on the brake piston. And then we'll push the horn up and we'll bring the housing up until it clears the top of the guide. And then we'll guide it in as we pull the brake down and the guide will, the housing will run into the guide there and we'll be all set. And then we will grab our legs, put them on. Two fingers on top of the boot, thumb underneath the foot post, pull them down and grab our clamp here. It goes on top and we'll go an eighth turn clockwise to tighten it down. I try to make sure the jersey is not underneath it. And then we'll pull our rider back down. Push it down and the pin goes through the back. I always kind of watch where the hole is on the pin and try and make sure that it's level. It makes it just easier when you're done. Uh, push it in straight, and then I'll put the pin through the hole. And then I always flip the pin so that the bent part comes towards the rider so that it fits a little tighter and you don't see it as much. And that's it.